Hi everybody, today we are going to do a synthesis problem where we're starting with a couple of one or two, three carbon molecules and we're going to end with a bigger molecule requiring us to put a couple pieces together to get the final product. Synthesis reactions are tough because it requires our brains to do pretty much all of the work by putting them together. We have to know reactants, we have to know how the mechanisms work and everything like that. So to start off with, since we know that we're going to be making a carbon-carbon bond, we should look at what carbon-carbon bond forming reaction is applicable to this problem. So in every uh, reaction, we have a nucleophile and an electrophile. So in this case, we're starting with, this is not the problem, just letting you know. This is just an example of the carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. So in this case, we have four carbons and we're going to stick them together. So that means that our final product should have four carbons. And the carbon-carbon bond that we're going to make requires a triple bond anion or an alkyne anion. And we need a molecule with a leaving group because this reaction completes a backside attack where the nucleophilic carbon is going to attack the carbon with the leaving group on it, which causes the leaving group to pop off, and then we form a carbon-carbon bond. So we have triple bond is still there. Our two carbon connected to our three carbon. So we have one, two, three, and then we still have to put carbon number four. So here's carbon number four. This is the most important part of a synthesis problem is actually sticking the carbons together. So now that we have a baseline understanding of how we start the problem, I feel like it's very important to write out your carbon-carbon bond forming reaction first because then you can make the little pieces later, but sticking the molecule, the molecule together is definitely the hardest part. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to do a big erase. So how do we decide how to put these two molecules together? Well, our reactants have two carbons and three carbons. Our final product has one, two, three, four, five. So that means we only need one of this and one of this because three plus two is five. Crazy. So we can either connect it with two plus three or we can do three plus two. So I feel like especially starting out with synthesis, it's important to write out both options for our squiggles, which is how we can cut up the molecule and decide where everything goes. So those are our two options. I'm gonna label them A and B. We're gonna write out both options because I think it's helpful visually to recognize what works and what does not work. So for part A, that would be making the two carbon molecule our nucleophile, and our three carbon molecule our electrophile. For option B, it would be the other way around. So that's always the way that these carbon-carbon bond reactions work is that you can either make one half the nucleophile or the electrophile, and then conversely, one half the nucleophile or the electrophile. So for our first example, since this molecule turned into the nucleophile, now we're going to make it the electrophile. So we have two carbons plus a bromine. And in this case, since this molecule was originally the electrophile, now we're going to make it the nucleophile. So we have three carbons where it's going to be the triple bond anion. So one thing I feel like is also important is to number your carbons because it's a really good way to make sure you have all the right carbons and it's easy to lose them sometimes. So I'm going to number it like one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter how you do it, whatever helps your brain. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. Now, why did I put my three on this side instead of on this side? It's just because it's what helps my brain. You can number it the other way. You can number it one, two, three, four, five. It honestly does not matter. It's just to keep track of your carbons. So we're going to keep numbering it the same way throughout, which is also a very good strategy. So if this is our nucleophile originally, that means that this is the one and the two. And that means that this is one and two. And we would want in our mechanism for the two carbon to connect to our three carbon. So since the mechanism requires this carbon to attack this carbon, that means that this is gonna be our three. Similarly to how this carbon would attack this carbon, making this carbon our three. So that's how I decide where my numbers go as I keep going. So now I have everything numbered. Now I just have to stick them together. So, it's the wrong color. Okay, so I have my one, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do the same thing for the other reaction where I have a triple bond, two carbons on one side, and then one carbon on the other side. I always draw my triple bond first. It's kind of like my, my center, but it doesn't matter how you draw it. Whatever helps your brain. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to look at my two options and decide which one is best, option A or option B. So I know that eventually I will have to put a chlorine on my four carbon and a chlorine on my three carbon. So that makes it very clear that this is not the right option because I can't put anything on my three or my four carbon anymore. Basically, CH4 carbons, you know, they have four substituents, um, CX4 or whatever, they can't do any more science. So this carbon and this carbon can't do any more science. There's no functional group to work off of. They're kind of just stuck there. The part that could do the science is the triple bond because we can turn it into a double bond and then add substituents. So that's why this one won't work is because even though I have created the functional group that I can put more things on, I wouldn't be able to put the chlorines where they need to go. I couldn't put them here or here or whatever. But so if this one isn't the right one, that means that this one is. So my substituents can now go on the three and four carbons because I have a functional group where I want to add more functional groups. So basically, you want to put your functional group, in this case, the triple bond, where you want more science to happen. So I know I want to add two more chlorines. So that means that I have to put them or I have to put the triple bond where I want the chlorines to go. So this is a really good starting strategy to figure out, OK, how do I even start the reaction? Use your reactants to decide if one of them is going to be the nucleophile and the electrophile or vice versa. So in this case, this molecule ended up needing to be our nucleophile and this molecule ended up needing to be our electrophile. So writing this part out, this carbon-carbon bond forming reaction is the most important part of the reaction. So now that, now that this is right, I'm going to erase this part so we have more space. And I'm going to move this up. So now that we have the pieces that make our product, we can actually go from here to here. We have to know how to go from here to here. We have to know how to go from here to here and here to here. So we have three mini syntheses to work out to get the pieces that we need to make kind of like the semi-final product and then our actual final product. So I'm going to go from the semi-final to the final because it makes me feel good. <laughs> so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, how do I go from a triple bond to adding two more functional groups? Well, I can't stick any functional groups onto a triple bond itself. I know that this will take more than one reaction because triple bonds can only have a substituent on either side. So that means that I'll have to turn my triple bond into a double bond and I can use um, H2 plus Lindlar's catalyst, and we know that Lindlar's catalyst, if it wasn't there, then this reaction would cause my triple bond to go all the way to a single bond. But since I want to stop it at a double bond and make the science keep going, that means I have to use Lindlar's catalyst. It kind of works like a poison to make the reaction stop halfway through. So I'm going to go from a triple bond to a double bond. One, two, three, four, five. My double bond is between three and four because my triple bond was between three and four. So the difference between drawing these two pieces is very important because we know that triple bonds are linear. They're 180 degrees for their geometry, but double bonds are trigonal planar because they have the carbons that are double bonded have three substituents. And even though we can't see the hydrogen that is here or the hydrogen that is here because we choose not to draw it, it doesn't mean that it's not there. So that's why the triple bond has to be drawn differently than our double bond. So we had our double bond. Now we have to figure out how to stick two chlorines on each side of the double bond. And that one is by using Cl2. If we used HCl, then we would only add one chlorine. So that's why we have to use Cl2 and make two chlorines. So now I have my final product, which is very exciting. I'm going to renumber my carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So I've done one mini reaction, and now we're going to go from here to here. Okay, so starting with my double bond, I have to add a bromine onto one of the carbons. So we're not going to use Br2 because then we'd have 
two bromines, we're going to use HBr in this case. And we know that HBr will create a carbocation, and then the Br- minus will come in and attack. So we've got this chunk. Easy. Cake. I love ones that are so easy. And now we're going to go from here to our triple bond anion nucleophile. So we have to get rid of the double bond first, and we still want more science to happen. So we're going to add a Br2 to make a vicinal dihalide. It's vicinal because they are on different carbons. If it were geminal, this is just an example, if it were geminal, then it would be on the same carbon, just like how Gemini means twins. So vicinal is side by side, like in the vicinity of something else, but geminal is if they were on the same carbon. So we just made a vicinal dihalide, because there's two dihalide. And now we're going to eliminate these two halides and form a triple bond. One of the best reagents for elimination is methoxide because this oxygen wants to do science so bad. It's negatively charged, it's got an extra lone pair of electrons, so if we use CH3O minus, then it'll eliminate one of the bromines and then the other one, so we're going to end up with a triple bond. And now we have to turn our triple bond into a triple bond anion. Oops, lost a carbon. Cool. That's why it's important to number, lol. So we've got three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five. And I know that my orientation flipped around, but that's why numbers are important. And I know that my triple bond is going to form between three and four, so I just kept it the same on the other side. So now we're going to make our triple bond turn into a triple bond anion. And to do that, we're going to use NH2 minus because this minus charge will take off the hydrogen that's hiding right here that we didn't draw in. And then we're left with a lone pair to do some science. Number our carbons, three, four, five. So that was a lot. <laughs> Synthesis is definitely tough, but I feel like drawing up both options of nucleophile or electrophile for your reagents is a really good start because then you can figure out, okay, I need to make this happen. And we decided that A was not the right option because, well, our triple bond would be in the wrong place. So I'm going to erase our A options. We have all the right things on the same page. And then with our B option, we knew that we needed to make our, oops, we need to make this our electrophile and this our nucleophile because the triple bond anion grabs onto this carbon, kicking off the bromine, and then we form our carbon-carbon bond to da. This is the most important part of the reaction because now that we get here, we can make the final product. This is what I like to call the semi-final product. We eliminated the triple bond to a double bond, or I guess added, and then we added our two chlorines on the end. So that's how we got from here to here. And then we had to make our baby pieces. We had to make the electrophile and we had to make the nucleophile from our starting products. So with our double bond, we just needed to add a bromine on the end. And with our other three carbon double bond molecule, we turned it into a vicinal dihalide so that we could eliminate it to become a triple bond. And then we took off one of the hydrogens and then made it a triple bond anion. So this is a lot of work and it can be kind of frustrating when you don't get it the first time, but if you start with the carbon-carbon bond forming reaction, then I feel like it's a lot easier to go from there. If you're missing understanding about these reagents, then I recommend looking at my video on mechanisms because not only will it help you with your mechanisms and showing your work, but also with recognizing why these reagents work when they do and why they don't. So I hope this video helps. And if you have any questions, then just put them in the comments. Awesome. Thank you.